forget Mars. The most insane journey in the solar system is to Uranus. Mars? Mars is all anyone talks about. Colonizing it, terraforming it, it sounds like our grand destiny. But what if I told you that the trip to Mars is a walk in the park compared to the longest, loneliest, and most bizarre journey in our cosmic backyard? A trip that doesn't take months, but almost a decade, to a world that spins on its side where the pressure would crush you in an instant, and the atmosphere might just be creating diamonds. The big question isn't if we can go, but what we would find if we ever got there. Stick with me, because in the next few minutes, you're going to understand why the real frontier isn't the red planet, but a pale, blue, and terrifyingly mysterious giant. Yeah, you heard that right. Almost a decade. While humanity dreams of taking its first steps on Mars, a mission to Uranus would be an undertaking of a whole other magnitude, a test of human and technological endurance on a scale never seen before. To prove this is the most insane trip imaginable, we need to answer a few key questions. First, how do you even begin a journey of nearly two billion miles? You can't just point a rocket and hit the gas. There's a cosmic dance, an incredible gravitational slingshot maneuver that's required using giants like Jupiter to fling us in the right direction. And what happens during those nine, 10 years of travel? How does a spacecraft survive the loneliness, the radiation, and the constant darkness of deep space, watching the sun shrink until it's just another bright star in the sky? Then there's the arrival. Why is Uranus so weird? It doesn't spin like other planets, it rolls, lying on its side, with its poles pointing where the equators of other planets would be. What kind of cataclysmic event in its past could have knocked an entire planet over? And finally, the million dollar question, or maybe the million diamond question. What does it mean to land on a planet that has no solid surface? What would actually happen if we tried to dive into its blue atmosphere? And is that whole story about diamond rain a sci-fi myth or a real phenomenon? Throughout this video, we're gonna simulate this journey step by step from launch here on Earth to the final plunge into the icy heart of Uranus. Get ready, because the reality is way more insane than fiction. Lift off and the cosmic slingshot. First off, forget the idea of a straight line. Traveling 1.75 billion miles is approximately equal to two, eight billion kilometers, takes more than just brute force. It takes cunning. We'd need one of the most powerful rockets ever built, something on the scale of NASA's SLS or SpaceX's Starship, just to escape Earth's gravity with enough speed. But even that wouldn't be enough. To cover that distance in less than a lifetime, we need a boost. And that boost comes from the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. The maneuver is called a gravity assist. The spacecraft isn't aimed at Uranus, but at Jupiter. As it flies by the gas giant, it steals a bit of its orbital energy, like a skateboarder using a ramp to gain speed. It gets flung as if by a cosmic slingshot onto a new high-speed trajectory, now aimed toward the outer solar system. The Voyager 2 probe, the only spacecraft to have ever visited Uranus, did exactly this back in the 82nd, a feat of calculation that's still impressive today. The long, lonely dark. Now comes the part that sets this journey apart from any other to the weight. We're talking about nine to 10 years of traveling in the void. Think about that. A child born at launch would almost be in fourth grade by the time the ship reached its destination. The seven to nine month trip to Mars looks like a short road trip in comparison. During this decade, the sun shrinks in the sky until it becomes just the brightest star among many. The silence is absolute, broken only by the low hum of the ship's systems. The danger doesn't come from aliens, but from the constant radiation and the ever-present risk of a collision with an invisible micrometeoroid. Loneliness is the real enemy. It's a marathon of psychological and technological endurance, a test of patience on a cosmic scale. Arrival at the Tilted Giant. After nearly a decade, we finally arrive. And the first view of Uranus is both underwhelming and terrifying. You won't see the colorful, stormy bands of Jupiter. What you see is an almost featureless sphere, a pale, 
ghostly blue-green. Its apparent calm hides a violent nature. And then, you notice the most bizarre thing of all. Uranus is lying on its side. Its axis of rotation is tilted 98 degrees. While all the other planets spin like tops, Uranus rolls like a bowling ball in its orbit. The leading theory is that early in the solar system's history, an Earth-sized object collided with Uranus with such unimaginable force that it literally knocked it over. Uranus wasn't born this way. It was brutalized. This tilt creates the most extreme seasons in the solar system. Imagine a day that lasts for 42 years, with one pole pointed directly at the sun, followed by a night of 42 years of darkness and freezing cold in the very same spot. It is a world of absolute extremes. The final plunge. What is landing? And now, the final question. What would happen if we tried to land? The short answer, there's nowhere to land. Uranus is a gas and ice giant. Landing here really means plunging. And that plunge would be the final and shortest part of our decade-long mission. The first layer we'd encounter would be the upper atmosphere, made of hydrogen, helium, and methane. It's the methane gas that absorbs red light, giving the planet its bluish hue. The temperature here is around negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit, MIES 224, zero C, making it one of the coldest places in the solar system. As we dive deeper, the pressure increases exponentially. We'd soon hit clouds of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, the ship would be inside a hurricane that smells like rotten eggs, with winds reaching up to 560 miles per hour, is approximately equal to 100 kilometer per hour. At this point, the pressure would crush our ship like a soda can. But let's assume our ship is indestructible. Deeper still, about 5,000 miles, is approximately equal to 8,000 kilometer. Down, the magic happens. The pressure becomes millions of times greater than on Earth, and temperatures soar to thousands of degrees. Here, methane molecules are torn apart. The carbon atoms, under this insane pressure, are compressed and crystallize. Yes, the most accepted scientific theory is that in this layer of Uranus, it literally rains solid diamonds, which slowly sink toward the center of the planet. Below the diamond rain, there is no rocky surface, but a strange, super hot, and dense mantle, or ocean, made of a soup of water, methane, and ammonia, ices. It's a state of matter that doesn't even exist on Earth. And only below all of that, maybe, there's a small, rocky core about the size of our planet. But no ship would ever make it there to tell the tale. So let's detail the final fate of our hypothetical, indestructible ship and talk about Uranus's best-kept secret. First, the definitive end of our ship. Even if it survived the crushing pressure and supersonic winds, its end would come from another force, temperature. Plunging into the mantle of super-hot ice, the temperature would climb to thousands of degrees. The ship wouldn't melt. It would be vaporized. Its metal structure, its computers, Everything would be subjected to heat so intense that its very atoms would be ripped apart, turning the solid debris into a cloud of superheated metallic gas. This cloud would mix with the soup of water, ammonia, and methane in the mantle, dissolving forever. Our ship wouldn't leave a tomb or even wreckage. It wouldn't rest at the bottom of an ocean or on a surface. It would simply become a part of Uranus. Its matter would be assimilated by the planet erasing any trace that it once came from a world 1.75 billion miles away. This is the end on a gas giant. Not a collision, but complete annihilation. Now, for Uranus's biggest secret, it's not its tilt nor its diamond rain, it's something it doesn't have, internal heat. Giant planets like Jupiter, Saturn, and even its twin Neptune radiate far more heat than they receive from the Sunday. This means they have an active internal engine, a hot core that churns their atmospheres and creates violent weather. Uranus is the great exception. It's thermally dead. It radiates roughly the same amount of heat back into space as it receives from the distant Sunday. Its internal temperature is incredibly low, and scientists aren't sure why. Why is its twin, Neptune, which is nearly the same size and composition, 
so active inside, while Uranus is so quiet. The leading theory takes us back to that cataclysmic impact that knocked it over. It's possible the collision didn't just tilt the planet, but was also so violent that it caused most of the heat from its formation to escape into space, leaving behind a cold, inert ice giant. Solving this mystery isn't just about Uranus. It's about understanding the recipe for building worlds. Uranus isn't just a weird planet. It's a cosmic crime scene that holds clues to how our solar system became what it is today. So, after all that, let's go back to our initial promise. Why forget Mars? Why is the journey to Uranus truly the most insane one in the solar system? It's not just about the distance or the time. It's because this journey challenges the very notion of exploration. Mars offers us an engineering challenge. How to land, how to build, how to survive. It's a concrete goal. Uranus is different. The insanity lies in traveling for a decade through the dark, not to conquer a new frontier, but to witness a cosmic ghost, a planet that was the victim of a catastrophe so violent it left it scarred and sideways forever, with seasons that last a human lifetime. The insanity is in plunging into an atmosphere where the physics we know is pushed to its absolute limit, where pressure doesn't just crush but creates jewels in an eternal storm where the concept of ground is replaced by an ocean of ice hotter than volcanic lava. Mars offers us a new shore to explore. Uranus offers us an abyss to be utterly annihilated in. That's the difference. It's a one-way trip, not just for the ship, but for our own understanding of what a planet can be. But if we can't land, if the journey is so long and the end is so final, why even dream of it? Because the goal of exploration isn't just to plant a flag, it's to expand our minds. In every bizarre fact about Uranus, its tilt, its diamond rain, its cold heart, there is a clue about the violent and chaotic history of our own cosmic neighborhood's formation. To understand Uranus is to understand how lucky we got here on Earth. You have to look at the chaos of a world like that to appreciate the stability and order of our own. It's a pilgrimage to the strangest place we know so that we can come back home and see it in a new light. Our insane journey to Uranus ends here, but the exploration of the cosmos is infinite. If you, like me, believe the answers to the biggest questions are out there, in the dark, waiting to be discovered, then join us. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because there are many other bizarre worlds and impossible journeys for us to unravel. What do you say next time we dive into the liquid methane oceans of Saturn's moon, Titan. Or maybe hunt for the mysterious Planet Nine, which could be hiding in the far reaches of our solar system? Leave your suggestion in the comments. Until the next journey.